morning. I'm up nice and early. It's half six and I've got a long day ahead over difficult terrain over the ridge and um, I've been treated to this beautiful sunrise. You have to walk uh, almost a mile up the road um, from the hostel till you get to this little car park with three standing stones there and an information board and a bit just past that is a sign to the right for the path. Look at that, you turn the corner and then you've got that in front of you, real Jurassic Park Lord of the Rings stuff. That's where I came up, past the first lake down there in the dip, and um, up past the second lake. Getting higher up now. Quite a bit of a scent in the first hour, warms you up nicely, and uh, now onto this flat bit as we contour this hill here. That's where I've come from. That's the way. Wow, you get to this bit and there's a clear path straight down by this fence, you can see, Sorry, you can. but don't go down there, stay on the same contour that goes to the right of this big pinnacle here. Well, what a spectacular start to the walk, about two hours in now, and uh, it's just awesome, there's, there's nothing more to say about it. There's hardly any wind. You've seen the sun rise. It's gonna be blue skies most of the day, I think. And uh, I can see the ridge now over there. Wow, <laughs> that looks hard work, but I'm looking forward to it after that start. I'm nearly down to the pass where there's a road a little car park and the ridge continues up over virtually every one of those peaks going right off into the distance and I think I can see the final one is the store I'm not sure but visibility is pretty good and I think that might be it made it to the uh, car park at the pass this is the road from Staffin to Uig and uh, it's at the four mile mark and um, after this, there are no uh, easy emergency routes off the ridge, so uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be okay today with the weather. Uh, but it's another 13 and a half miles of tough terrain, so it's time to push on. That's looking back to uh, the Kerrang where I came through the gap there. Look at that, that's terrific. That was a stiff climb from up there over that uh, smaller summit there up to this one and uh, another sheer drop right down there look at that and the ridge continues 
but now it's going along a flat bit along here for a little while which is very welcome. skirts round the summit on an arc and then you come down this steep grassy bank it's not dangerous but it's steep and slippery About three and a half hours in and uh, time for a break and some food. Oh, I needed that break. Take the weight off my legs and uh, put some food in. Feel much better now. Just uh, 15, 20 minutes stop and um, I've got a really serious climb coming up. Have a look at this one. I was quite apprehensive about this, uh, this ridge walk. Um, it's definitely the most strenuous day on this hike and probably on any of the others I've done. It's uh, 17 and a half miles. 5,700 feet of ascent and that uh, car park at the pass at the four mile mark as I said is the last chance to quit if you're in trouble and then after that you've got to uh, push on so I've made sure I've uh, learned the route really well I've got a map a compass I've got the guidebook and I bought myself a Garmin GPS this little thing here first time I've really used it on a long walk. I got to practice with it so I know how to operate it and I loaded up a uh, sky trail route uh, in advance and it's working really well. The little pings go off every hundred yards or so. It just gives you a feeling of uh, confidence that you're going in the right direction and uh, I thought it might be too much you know, I've got enough things in my pockets and carrying in my hands and everything. Uh, something else swinging around on this carabiner didn't really uh, seem necessary. But uh, on this particular ridge, I wasn't going to take any risks. So I waited for good weather. I got myself fit. I got all my kit right and I bought a GPS. So, so far, so good. Looking back again, but if I pan west as you can see down there i think that's the little village of uig and there's a bay there
there are so many dramatic, spectacular views. You tend to get blasades, one after another after another. Have a look at this one. Sorry I've got a hold you down there, the wind noise is horrendous up here, but um, that's uh, 13 miles in 6 hours, so about two thirds of the way through, I'm quite pleased with the progress and uh, I think I'm going to be okay to catch the bus at the store car park, so uh, time for a second break and then the last push. Okay so I can see the store over there and that's the last one. So. So, two more ascents basically. Nearly done now. Oh, I'm really tired now. Oh, I think I've got about one or two miles left, but it's really steep rough going there's no there's no marker posts there's, there's often not even a trodden path and you're just bushwhacking across moorland it's really saps your energy but uh, like i say nearly done and i think they've saved the best bit till last on this walk okay you might have thought i was building it up a little bit saying the best was for last but let me just reveal this What can you say about it? It's just jaw-droppingly beautiful. Well, I've made it down to the car park at the store by the road. <sighs> I'm exhausted now. 18 miles or so, 5,700 feet of ascent. <sighs> the overwhelming feeling is is one of relief really that it's, that it's all gone well without mishaps so that's the end of day two and i'm ready for a good kick